when you're dealing with a medical emergency, the fewer decisions you have to make, the better, because you will be mentally exhausted. When you are going through, you will not have the mental capacity to make decisions. So these are some things to consider now. So it's one less decision you have to make. If you are traveling long term, if you are considering moving abroad, or if you already live abroad, I want to leave you with these four things to consider. Number one, insurance, 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 insurance. I don't care how healthy you think you are. You need insurance. Insurance is not something that you can afford to forego. I don't care how cheap it is in the country where you're going. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. Yes, it's cheaper to go to the little clinic, to go to the doctor when you got the sniffles, when you got a little cough when you got a headache, when you got an ache. I'm sure that's cheaper. I'm sure you can go to the pharmacy and buy over-the-counter medicine that will be prescriptions in the United States. I thought it all. I thought the same thing. I heard it all, especially when you're in Latin America, like Mexico, um, um, Colombia, uh, those countries where things are cheaper than the United States. You can go to the doctor for like, a couple of pesos. You don't know what could happen tomorrow. Having the sniffles and having a couple of aches is not the same thing as having a life-changing diagnosis. Insurance is so important and I beg of you, please, please do not forego insurance and think, oh, I could just pay it out of pocket. You don't know what you may face tomorrow. And also when it comes to insurance, there's different types of insurance. There's travel insurance that covers like cancellations and delays and replacing your bags and and getting you a hotel room if your flight is canceled, things like that. That's just travel insurance. That's important. But if you're traveling long term or if you're moving abroad, it's not enough. There's also nomad insurance. Nomad insurance covers, covers a little more than your travel insurance but it primarily covers the basic travel insurance coverage and then like emergency care treatment. In my opinion, if you're moving abroad, that's still not enough. You need health insurance, not travel insurance. Please get health insurance. And if you don't know how to choose good international health insurance, Hire an insurance broker. Hire an insurance broker that can cover all of the options for you, that can explain the coverage, that can explain the exceptions. Please do not forego insurance coverage just because you're healthy. I felt fine. I had no symptoms. Insurance coverage will give you that peace of mind And it'll be one less thing you have to worry about when you're facing life-changing medical decisions. The second thing I want you to consider is your family plan. In the event of emergency, what's your family plan? I know a lot of us move abroad and we create community abroad, which is important. Make sure your community expands beyond the Black expat community. Make sure you're creating a family plan that includes the people you're familiar with in the Black expat community. Also create relationships with the locals because in the event of emergency, having connections to a local person that understands how the inner workings of the medical care system, the the language, if there's a, a, a language barrier, thankfully here in Malaysia, 
they speak English, so it's not so much of a language barrier, but it's still a cultural difference. Having connections to a local can help you navigate those things. And when you're dealing with a medical emergency, it can give you so much peace of mind knowing that you have someone on your side that's a local that understands how things work and that can help you navigate the system. So part of your family plan, make sure you connect with the, with the local, develop friendships, genuine friendships with a local in the community where you choose to live. But in addition to your family plan, if something were to happen to you abroad, especially if you're far away from home, like where I am, on the other side of the world in Malaysia. If something were to happen to you abroad, what is your family plan? Do you have a contact person that will say, I will come? Who will be your contact person? While it's amazing to have friends in community, I cannot tell you how much of a burden it relieved from my heart to have family with me. Who is your contact person in your family that has the ability to come in an emergency? Do they have a passport? If they don't have a passport, get them their passport now. My second family member that came here, her passport had expired. So even though that was something we were able to overcome, if they have a passport, that's one less thing you have to worry about, one less decision you have to make. When you're dealing with a medical emergency, the fewer decisions you have to make, the better, because you will be mentally exhausted. You will not have the mental capacity to make some decisions. I am usually a very detailed person. I'm usually the decision maker. I'm the researcher. I'm very, very decisive once I make a decision. Let me tell you, in the midst, in the deep, deep valley, of what I was going through, I didn't have the mental capacity to make decisions. And I told my aunt, I defer to you. I defer to you, whatever you think is best. And I know she was like, oh my goodness, my baby really is sick. Cause I would never say that to anyone. When you are going through, you will not have the mental capacity to make decisions. So these are some things to consider now. So it's one less decision you have to make. Think about your family plan, the community you will have to support you, whether it's the Black expat community, as well as local community where you've established friendships and a family member or loved one back at home, a close friend back at home. Who's going to be your primary contact person? Who could come to where you are to support you in a very absolute worst case scenario? Do they have a passport? If not, please help them get a passport, or if their passport is about to expire, please help them to renew their passport, okay? The passport is expired, or if someone doesn't have a passport, there are options where they can get one. Um, two ways, you can get an expedited passport that we went through. Number one, they can give you a passport within 48 hours if you need to travel for an immediate family member. And they are very, very specific about what's defined as an immediate family member. It has to be a parent, a spouse, or a sibling to be classified as an immediate family member in order for you to get a passport approved within 24, 24 to 48 hours. The second way to get a passport approved, this could take up to two weeks. It could be urgent travel, but you have to show them proof that your flight is booked and it has to be within the two week period. They can make exceptions outside of that by the grace of God, because the Lord went ahead. My cousin passport had expired. She didn't know it had expired. And we saw that we didn't qualify for the family emergency because I was not an immediate family member. So we didn't think we could get the 48 hour turnaround. So we were thinking she probably wouldn't be able to come for two weeks. I was at peace with that. It wasn't what we wanted, but I was at peace with it. And we both decided that whatever was meant to be, whatever God allowed, whatever was God's will, that's what it will be. So she just followed the process. She followed the process as it was outlined. When she got to her passport appointment, they were able to process her passport and approve it within 48 hours. We did not expect that. 
the Lord went ahead <laughs> and she was able to fly on the flight that we had booked for her. That was like two days later. The Lord went ahead. So there are options, but those options also cost extra money. So please get your contact person, your family member, your loved one, your best friend. Make sure they have a passport, a valid passport with validity of at least six months on the passport so they can enter the country where you are. The third thing I would ask for you to consider is when you land in your new country, I know everything is exciting, everything is new, and you want to explore and do all the touristy things. I would suggest to make high on your list of things that you do when you first land is to become familiar with the best medical facility that's available in the city, wherever you are. Make sure that you identify the best medical facility wherever you are. Find that out within days of you landing. It just so happened I had the wellness screening, the health screening already scheduled. So I had already researched Prince Court Medical Center and I already knew that was one of the best medical facilities here in Kuala Lumpur. So make sure you become familiar with whatever the medical center is. The best medical center is where you are currently located. If nothing happens, great. You just store that information away, but you want to know where you want to go in the event something does happen. So it's not a decision you have to make in the midst of that emergency situation. And for my border hoppers that don't get long-term visas, you just go to this country for as long as your passport allows you to stay. And then you leave and go to another country or whenever your um, tourist visa runs out, you go to another country and then you come back. You need to explore what your visa options are and be familiar with those visa options, all right? Here in Malaysia, United States citizens are allowed to stay in Malaysia with just their passport for up to 90 days, for up to 90 days. But if you have a medical emergency, they have what's called international executive visa support or something like that. There's like a premier lounge in the lobby of Prince Court Medical Center. So if you're admitted and in order to receive the medical treatment, if you have to extend beyond the tourist visa that you're allowed on your passport, they have representatives in the hospital that will come to your hospital room, that will get a copy of your passport, to identify how long you're allowed to stay in the country and they will process the visa, the visa extension for you. If you're physically able, they do want you to show up at the immigration office with them, but they will represent you. If you're not physically able, there's something that they do um, in order to prove that you're not physically able and they take that to the immigration office and request the extension for you. But you'll need medical paperwork from your doctor that documents the treatment you're getting, how long you'll need that treatment so they can determine how long the visa can be extended. As US citizens in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, we have two options for visa extensions beyond the 90 days. One option is a 60 day extension if you have the medical emergency, let's say at the end of your 90 days, you can easily get a 60 day extension um, if you just need a couple of more days or a couple of more weeks for the medical care that you need. But if you need long-term medical care, you can get a, v a medical visa extension up to one year. Um, I don't know what the cost of that is off the top of my head. I do have it written down somewhere, but the immigration office that's in the hospital can help you do that. So what I know and what I just shared is specific to Malaysia. So whatever country you're in, you need to become familiar with your visa options and the process to extend your visa in the event you need medical treatment beyond what your passport will allow you to stay. And that is especially important for our border hoppers out there. I do not recommend border hopping, find out what the visa options are in the country you want to stay in and apply for the long-term visa so that you can legally be allowed to stay.
Because in the event you have a medical emergency, all those extra hoops you have to jump through, even though there are options available, there's still more decisions you have to make. I promise you, in the event of an emergency, you want to be able to make few, as few decisions as possible. Get your long-term visa if you plan to stay in that country. Get your long-term visa, please, so you can avoid these extra hoops that you have to jump through if you do need medical treatment. And the last thing, the fourth thing, is having funds available. This may need to be a separate video that I'll elaborate on further. This experience has changed my perspective about the importance of money. This is a personal finance investing channel. You already knew that financial literacy, good personal finance management and investing was important. This experience has enhanced it even more. When my family member said, I will come, I was in a position to tell them, do not worry about the cost of anything. The fact that you will be physically here with me is priceless. I want to book you a business class or first class flight because I want you to be comfortable because I knew neither one of them had ever flown 24 hours before. When the insurance company said your claim is denied, that did not change the peace that I had to stay here. I did not want to go back to the United States and risk being told, oh, we'll just watch it, we'll wait. I did not want to have to risk going back to the United States and be faced with any type of racism. I was at peace with the care I received here. So whether the insurance approved it or denied it, I was still going to get the treatment I needed here. Time was of the essence and I did not want to delay it any further. So having funds available, having one less thing to worry about gave me the peace of mind to say, I want the best treatment where I currently am. Money should not be any reason to influence life changing decisions. So when you prioritize your finances, it helps you to have the peace of mind to make the decisions that are in your best interest. We'll talk about this more later in future videos, and you're probably gonna get sick of me talking about it because my perspective has changed so much because of this current experience, and I'm going to share it with you. But the point I wanna make today in this last point of this video is to please, please, before you move abroad, please, before you travel long-term abroad, have funds available in the event of an emergency so that money is not the reason you're not able to get the absolute best care that you deserve. I know there are people on the internet that are showing you, you don't need a lot of money to do this. You don't need a lot of money to do that. And they're right. You can move abroad without a lot of money. When you're healthy, when you're strong, when everything in life is going according to plan, you don't need a lot of money. You don't need any money, to be honest. When everything is going perfectly, what happens when it doesn't? What happens when things are not perfect, when things don't go according to plan? You can feel great. You can look great. I'm blessed that I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> Two months ago, I had no idea that my life would be what it is today. I attribute my financial health to my Lord and Savior as well. Down to the finances. He already went ahead and prepared it for me. And I believe that he can do the same for you too. So I share this last point to make sure you have funds available 
because I want you to have all the things that you deserve when you move abroad. But I don't want you to do it with a short-term mindset, with a short-sighted mindset and circumstances that may become worse than what you had when you left because you didn't prepare financially. Money is a tool that can bring you peace, that can make sure you have one less thing to worry about when life happens. Because money was not a concern, I was able to get my family here comfortably. I was able to pay the medical bills, to pay for the surgery, to pay for the hospital stay. Money was the least of my concerns because I needed all of my mental capacity, all of my energy, first and foremost, to turn to God, to get closer to God. And then God gave me the peace so that I can focus on healing. When your body is going through trauma of a major surgery, you need all the energy you can muster to focus on healing. I attribute my healing and my peace and the lack of pain to being able to focus on what was important. And that was allowing my body to rest, being mentally at rest, being spiritually at peace so that I can heal. I hope what I've shared with you has given you some food for thought. I hope what I've shared with you has helped you understand the importance of your personal finances. I hope what I've shared with you has reminded you of God's grace and how he goes ahead in the storm, you can have peace. Even in the middle of the storm, you can still have peace when you're looking to God for your peace. <laughs>